good morning students of class 4 students i'm sure all of you are happy and healthy in your homes students please stay indoors and keep yourself safe from the excessive heat and corona virus students your safety should be your priority so please stay indoors students today i'll be continuing with lesson 6 of the wordsworth english reader book gulliver in the land of lilliput so those of you who have got the new edition of the wordsworth english reader book please take out your books and turn page number 45 lesson 6 gulliver in the land of lilliput page number 45 lesson 6 gulliver in the land of lilliput students in my last video i had discussed the exercises of comprehension now today first of all i'll be reading the lesson once again for you and then i'll be discussing the frame sentences and the other exercises of the lesson lesson 6 gulliver in the land of lilliput please turn to page number 45 I must have slept about 9 hours for when I woke up it was daylight I tried to get up but I couldn't move my arms and legs were tied to pegs fastened into the ground thin strong cords were tied across my body and attached to pegs in the ground my long hair was spread out and tied down in the same manner all i could do was to stare upwards at the sun blinking to ease the pain on my already strained eyes suddenly i heard strange noises around me but i couldn't move to find out what they were or where they were coming from the next moment i felt something alive moving on my leg it progressed over my stomach and onto my chest stopping just below my chin i lowered my eyes downwards as much as i could hoping to see what sort of insect was crawling on me then i suddenly gasped why it's a human creature barely 6 inches tall this creature had a bow and arrow in his hands and was followed by 40 more creatures like him i was so surprised that i let out a frightful roar all the creatures ran helter skelter and jumped off my body in terror after some time they gathered courage and climbed back onto my body this time one of them even clambered onto my chin to get a closer look at me he let out a screech of excitement hekina degul hekina degul repeated the crowd after him I didn't give too much attention to their words. I was more concerned with setting myself free by twisting and turning and pulling and pushing. I managed to pull out the pegs that were holding my left arm down. With one arm free, I was able to free my hair and turn my head to the right. there were cries of panic from the little creatures and suddenly hundreds of tiny arrow hit my left hand pricking me like hundreds of needles when arrows began striking my face i groaned with pain and raised my left hand to protect myself they also started jabbing spears at my sides Luckily for me 
my jacket was thick and prevented me from getting severely injured. I thought to myself that the wisest thing to do would be to lie still until night. So I stopped struggling and the arrows stopped coming. But soon I heard another loud noise near my right ear. It was like a banging, like people at work. I turned as much as I could and saw about 50 of the creatures setting up a platform a foot and a half above the ground. Soon, four of them climbed up ladders and stood on the platform. In the middle was an important looking man. He made a long speech looking in my direction. And of course, I didn't understand a word of it. But I could tell from the tone of his voice that some words were threats, others promises and still others reassurances. Especially when he pointed all around and repeated over and over, Lilliput, Lilliput. So, I was in a place called Lilliput, though I had never heard of such a country or seen it on a map. I tried to answer the important looking men and tell him that I was a friend and meant no harm. I even raised my eyes and hands to heaven to make my promise stronger. The last time I had eaten was hours before the ship sank. So I had to show these people that I was hungry. I did it by putting my fingers into my mouth as I spoke. The great Hargo, as I later learned, this important lord was called, understood my sign and shouted out orders to the crowd below. A hundred little people immediately placed ladder at my sides and climbed up on my body with baskets full of meat and bread, which they dumped into my mouth. This was the food that their emperor had ordered as soon as as he had received word of my arrival. When I signaled that I was also thirsty, they rolled a barrel up a ladder and across my chest. Then they poured a delicious liquid that tasted like wine. But their barrel was only equal to a cup. And after they had given me a second barrel, they showed me that they had no more. I was grateful to these little creatures that treated me generously. Students, now let's revise the comprehension. Let's start with exercise A. Answer the following questions briefly. And the first question is, where did Gulliver find himself after the shipwreck? Answer 1. After the shipwreck, comma, Gulliver found himself tied to pegs, fastened into the ground, surrounded by strange human creatures, barely 6 inches tall, in the land of Lilliput. Question 1. Where did Gulliver find himself after the shipwreck? Answer 1. After the shipwreck, Gulliver found himself tied to pegs, fastened into the ground, surrounded by strange human creatures, barely 6 inches tall in the land of Lilliput. Question 2. What had the strange creatures done to Gulliver? Answer 2. The strange creatures had tied Gulliver with cords attached to pegs fastened into the ground. What had the strange creatures done to Gulliver? Answer 2. 
the strange creatures had tied gulliver with cords attached to pegs fastened into the ground question number 3 why did the creatures shoot arrows at him why did the creatures shoot arrows at gulliver answer 3 when gulliver tried to free himself from the cords and pull the pegs the creatures shot arrows at him question 3 why did the creatures shoot arrows at gulliver answer 3 when gulliver tried to free himself from the cords and pull the pegs the creatures shot arrows at him as gulliver had uh, been tied by the little creatures so he twisted and turned he pushed and pulled to set himself free so when the little creatures saw him doing this they started striking arrows at him they also jabbed him with spears also because they didn't want gulliver to free himself as they were scared they didn't know actually that gulliver was a friend or an enemy so why did the creatures shot shoot arrows at gulliver answer 3 when gulliver tried to free himself from the cords and pull the pegs the creatures shot arrows at him question 4 who was the important looking man the man who stood on the one and a half feet high platform and the man who gave the speech who was that important looking man so answer the great hergo was a important looking man answer 4 the great hergo was the important looking man and about him gulliver learned later when he became familiar with those little creatures when gulliver was familiar with those little creatures that freed him and that time gulliver learned that the important looking man was a lord of lilliput and he was known as the great hergo question number 5 what did he want to say to gulliver now when he stood on that one and a half feet platform and he gave a speech and what did he want to say to gulliver through his speech so answer 5 great hergo made a long speech looking at gulliver though gulliver couldn't understand his words but he could tell from the tone of his voice that some words were threats others promises and still others reassurances great hergo made a long speech looking at gulliver though gulliver couldn't understand his words but he could tell from the tone of his voice that some words were threats others promises and still other reassurance students this answer means when the little creatures they had tied gulliver because they were scared he was unknown to them they did not know that he was a friend or an enemy so the great hergo he was an important lord of lilliput so he stood on the platform and gave a speech he wanted gulliver to listen to him and his speech was uh, some warnings which were given to gulliver that he if he goes against their wishes he'll be punished or he'll be striked with arrows or jabbed with spears or whatsoever and some promises that he be if he listens to them if he acts according to their wishes they will be friendly and then some reassurances that he need not be scared they'll be friendly if he acts as per their wishes and their language was entirely la different from the language we all speak so gulliver couldn't understand their language but only two words he could hear again and again and those two words were lilliput and lilliput so from the tone of that important looking men's voice gulliver could make out that they were warnings promises and reassurances now question number 6 what did the crowd give gulliver to eat and drink answer 6 the crowd gave gulliver baskets 
full of meat and bread to eat. They also gave him two barrels equal to a cup full of delicious liquid that tasted like wine to drink. Now, for the little creatures, they were two big barrels, two big drums. But for Gulliver, the barrels were of the size of a cup. So, in bracket, you need to write equal to a cup. And equal to a cup, cup, size of the cup for Gulliver. But for the little creatures, they were like barrels, big drums in which we store water. So, what did the crowd give Gulliver to eat? Answer, the crowd gave Gulliver baskets full of meat and bread to eat. They also gave him two barrels equal to a cup full of delicious liquid that tasted like wine to drink. But don't forget, the size of the barrels was like cup for Gulliver. But they were extremely big for the little creatures. So these were the question and answer students. Please complete them in your English notebook. Now let's revise exercise B. Who spoke these lines in the story? The first line. My arms and legs were tied to pegs fastened into the ground. Who spoke this line in, in this lesson students? And who was tied? Dr. Lamuel Gulliver was tied. So naturally he is speaking the line. So the answer will be Dr. Lamuel Gulliver. My arms and legs were tied to pegs fastened into the ground. These lines were spoken by Dr. Lamuel Gulliver in the story. But in your notebook you will simply write Dr. Lamuel Gulliver. Then <clears throat> the first one again I will repeat. My arms and legs were tied to pegs fastened into the ground. Who spoke this line? Answer will be Dr. Lemuel Gulliver. Doctor's D would be capital D-O-C-T-O-R. Doctor. Then Lemuel's L will be capital. Capital L E M U E L. Lemuel. Then again Gulliver's G will be capital G U double L I V E R Gulliver. Dr. Lemuel Gulliver. Then the second line. Why? It's a human creature barely six inches tall. Who spoke this line? Answer again. When the little creatures, they had crawled on Dr. Gulliver's body. And he was wondering as to which sort of insect was crawling onto his body. So, why? It's a human creature barely six inches tall. Again, the answer will be Dr. Lemuel Gulliver. He spoke this line. Why it's a human creature barely six inches tall? Answer, who, sp who spoke this line in the story? Answer, Dr. Lemuel Gulliver. Then the third one, Hekina Dagun. Now, if you remember that in the story, first time Gulliver, when the little creatures, they had climbed onto Gulliver and when Gulliver lowered, lowered his eyes to see as what was there on his body, and when he saw these small creatures standing on his body, he screamed in terror. He roared in terror. And this caused a panic among the little creatures who were standing on top of Gulliver's body. And they all ran helter-skelter. And they jumped off his body. But after some time, they gathered courage. And the little creatures again climbed on the on onto Gulliver's body and one of the little creatures he clambered onto Gulliver's chin to have a close look at Gulliver and after looking at Gulliver from nearby he shouted in excitement Hekina Degun so who shouted one of the little creatures one of the little creatures of Lilliput so one of the little creatures of Lilliput, he shouted, Hekina Degul. So who shouted? One of the little creature. And their language was entirely different from what Gulliver could understand. So he could not understand their words. And as it is, um, Gulliver's priority was to free himself. 
so who shouted hekina degul one of the little creatures then the fourth one lilliput lilliput now where did uh, gulliver heard this uh, word when the important looking man was making a speech from the platform he gave a long speech but only two words gulliver could understands which were repeated again and again and those two words were lilliput lilliput and the speech was made by the important looking man and who was the important looking man the great hargo so this line lilliput lilliput was spoken by the great hargo answer will be the great hargo now students students now please complete exercise a and b of comprehension neatly in your notebook now i'll be discussing the words to used for framing sentences and my first word student is fast uh, fasten the first word used for make sentences is fasten and this is given on the page number 45 here it is fasten means ta fixed fasten means fixed fasten the meaning of fasten is fixed and the sentence on fasten is she fastened the belt tightly around her waist fasten means to fixed and the sentence is she fastened the belt b e l t belt tightly t i g h t l y tightly around a r o u n d around her waist w a i s t waist jo beta kamar hoti hai waist you all wear belt around your waist when you uh, come to school so she fastened the belt tightly around her waist the sentence is she fastened the belt tightly around her waist now students the second word for make sentence is shipwreck and shipwreck means left by a ship destroyed at sea left by a ship destroyed at sea and the sentence on shipwreck is he is shipwrecked on an alien planet he is shipwrecked on an alien planet now students what do you mean by shipwreck that means like gulliver he was also shipwrecked his ship had uh, split into two parts it was broken and must have drowned in the sea so somehow gulliver managed to reach the shore so that is anything the leftover of the ship which has been destroyed in the sea the leftover when the things they reached the shore those things are known as shipwreck so he is shipwrecked on an alien planet an alien planet means an on an unknown planet like gulliver he also reached an alien planet which was totally unknown to him he had neither seen it on a map nor had he heard it before so the sentence is he is shipwrecked on an alien planet and the spelling of alien is a l i e n planet p l a n e t he is shipwrecked on an alien planet the sentence on fasten was she fastened the belt tightly around her waist and the sentence on shipwreck is he is shipwrecked on an alien planet now students the third word for make sentence is strained and strain means stressed or tense stressed or tensed and the sentence on strained is her face looked strained and weary her face looked strained and weary weary means tired w e a r y weary weary means tired so her face looked strained and weary her face 
look strained and weary now students my next word for make sentences progress the fourth word is progressed and progress means moved forward aage badhna and the sentence on progressed is the work progressed at a slow pace the work progressed at a slow pace and pace means speed p a c e pace pace means speed and the sentence on progressed is the work progressed at a slow pace p a c e pace the work progressed at a slow pace then students my fifth word for make sentence is frightful and frightful means terrible frightful means terrible and the sentence is they left the house in a frightful mess they left the house in a frightful mess m e double s mess at times the burglars they enter the house isn't it house where nobody is there and after the theft they leave the house in a frightful they have scattered all the things around the total thing is messy in a disorder so the sentence is they left the house in a frightful mess you can also write the burglars left the house in a frightful mess or the thieves left the house in a frightful mess mess means disorder then students my next word is for make sentences clambered clambered and clambered means climbed with difficulty climbed with difficulty and the sentence is the children clambered over the rocks 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 students then my next word for make sentence is panic and panic means sudden uncontrollable fear or anxiety sudden uncontrollable fear or anxiety beta ekdam se aisa kuch ho jo aapke control mein nahi ho aapko jisse dar lage anxiety ho ki now you are worried ki ab kya hoga that is panic so the sentence on panic is the earthquake caused panic among the people the earthquake caused panic among the people the earthquake the spelling of earthquake is e a r t h q u a k e the earthquake caused c a u s e d caused panic p a n i c panic among a m o n g among the people whenever there's a earthquake there's a panic among the people they all start running here and there to save their lives so the earthquake caused panic among the people and the next sentence uh, the word for make sentence student is arrival the word is arrival arrival means coming arrival means coming kisi ka aana and the sentence on arrival is the late arrival of the train messed up all our plans you had made lot of plans that uh, we'll reach uh, the place in time and then we'll do this that but as the train was late all the plans were messed up you couldn't act according to your plan so the sentence is the late arrival of the train messed up all our plans the late arrival of the train messed up the spelling of messed up is m e 
डबल एस ई डी मेस्ट अप ऑल आर प्लांट्स स्पेलिंग ऑफ प्लांट्स पी एल ए एन एस प्लांट्स तो स्टूडेंट्स वंस अगेन आई रिवाइज ऑल द वर्ड्स ऑफ मेक सेंटेंसेस प्लीज लिसन टू मी केयरफुली द फर्स्ट वर्ड स्टूडेंट इज फास्टन एंड द सेंटेंस ऑन फास्टन इज शी फास्टन द बेल्ट tightly around her waist she fastened the belt tightly around her waist the second word for make sentence is shipwrecked and the sentence is he is shipwrecked on an alien planet he is shipwrecked on an alien planet the first sentence was on fasten which means fixed and the sentence was she fastened the belt tightly around her waist she fastened the belt tightly around her waist the second word for make sentence is shipwrecked which means left by a ship destroyed at sea and the sentence is he is shipwrecked on an alien planet he is shipwrecked on an alien planet then students my next word for make sentence is strain and the meaning of strained is stressed and tense and the sentence is her face looked strained and weary you can also change the sentence his face looked strained and weary my grandmother's face looked strained and weary any you can change the noun any noun you can fit in place of her face now the fourth word is progressed and progress means moved forward and the sentence on progressed is the work progressed at a slow pace the work progressed at a slow pace the work progressed at a slow pace then the fifth word for make sentence is frightful and frightful means terrible and the sentence on frightful is they left the house in a frightful mess they left the house in a frightful mess then students the next word for make sentence is clambered which means climb with difficulty clambered means climb with difficulty and the sentence for clambered is the children clambered over the rocks the children clambered over the rocks the children clambered over the rocks students then my next word for make sentence is panic and panic means sudden uncontrollable fear or anxiety sudden uncontrollable fear or anxiety fear which is beyond our control and the sentence on panic is the earthquake caused panic among the people the earthquake caused panic among the people the earthquake caused panic among the people and the last word for make sentence student is arrival and arrival means coming arrival means coming the late arrival of the train messed up all our plans the late arrival of the train messed up all our plan students once again i'm repeating all the sentences for you the first one is fasten and the sentence on fasten is she fastened the belt tightly around her waist and students please remember you always begin the sentence with a capital letter and end with a full stop so please begin your sentence with a capital letter and end with a full stop and wherever the word appears in the sentence please underline it with a pencil to highlight the word please underline the word with a pencil so the first word for make sentence is fasten and the sentence is she fastened the belt tightly around her waist and the second word is shipwrecked and the sentence is he is shipwrecked on an alien planet he is shipwrecked on an alien planet the third word is strain and the sentence on strain is her face looked strained and weary her face looked strained and weary 
The fourth word is progressed and the sentence on progressed is the work progressed at a slow pace. The work progressed at a slow pace. The fifth word is frightful and the sentence on frightful is they left the house in a frightful mess. They left the house in a frightful mess. The sixth word is clambered and the sentence on clambered is the children clambered over the rocks. The children clambered over the rocks. The seventh word is panic and the sentence on panic is the earthquake caused panic amongst the people. The earthquake caused panic among the people. And the eighth word for me sentence is arrival. The late arrival of the train messed up all our plans. The late arrival of our, the train messed up all our plans. Students, please write these sentences in your notebook and please draw a parting line with a scale and pencil after each sentence. And remember that you always begin the sentence with a capital letter and end with a full stop. So students, the comprehension exercise have been discussed and frame sentences. And please do all these three in your English notebook. That's all for today. Thank you. Have a good day.